On an adventurous dive off the coast, Carter was thrilled to stumble upon what seemed to be an unusual gathering of crabs. The sight was mesmerizing, with hundreds of them huddled together. But as he approached them, the sight that greeted him was far from ordinary. Carter had never seen anything like this before. He had been doing deep dives in these waters for a long time now, and though he had seen most of what these waters had to offer, if not all. Carter could not help but be really curious about this. It could be something simple like a dead fish carcass. He had to get the crabs out of the way in order to see. But the crustaceans were anything but pushovers. If they got a hold of one of his fingers or another body part, they could do some serious damage with their pincers. And Carter's thin diving suit was not exactly prepared to withstand such an attack. But besides his suit, Carter had also brought a small underwater camera with him. It did not take the best pictures, but if he got close enough to the crab pile, he could easily make a picture that he could use to prove what he had found that day. He swam around a little longer, looking for a stick or something he could use to drive the crabs apart from a distance. But Carter, he had no such luck. His oxygen was starting to run out and he had to get back to the surface and back home. So, with a heavy heart and a lot of unfulfilled curiosity, he left the crab pile behind. At least, for now. But he did make an effort to remember exactly where he had encountered it. Carter knew that he would be back soon, rather than later. In the moments that he had time the following two days, Carter was doing research online to try and find something that could explain the crab's behavior he had witnessed. In a pile of crabs, most of them have no chance of getting to the food on the bottom, so they would have no reason to stay there and continue to pile on. It just became more and more clear to Carter that he had encountered something truly special that day, and he was desperate to tell somebody. Carter ended up calling the Marina Biology Department of the local university. He wanted to share his finding with the students and professors there and see what their opinion on it was. Professor Eric Ludwig. The man was a teacher at the school and an expert on sea creature behavior. Carter's strange story had made the rounds around the coffee table in the teacher's lounges, and Ludwig immediately had his interest piqued when Carter revealed that he had a picture of the ordeal that he had not mentioned or shown to anybody yet, Eric immediately realized that he made a great choice calling Carter. Carter, excited by the prospect of learning more, did not hesitate to send the picture to Professor Ludwig. The next day, Carter stood alone on the deck, the ocean's expanse stretching before him. The team gathered, hands joined over the pile of dive gear. They each vowed to tread lightly, to study without harm. It was a pact made with each other, and the silent witnesses below the waves, the crabs, the fish, the very ocean itself, to explore with respect. As the ocean floor came into view, Carter's breath caught in his regulator. Where there had been hundreds, now thousands of crabs amassed, a living carpet on the seabed. The team hovered above the spectacle, struck by the scale of the congregation. Each crab seemed a purposeful participant in this mysterious assembly, a piece of a larger, pulsing entity. Gently, with a care that spoke of years of experience, the behaviorist coaxed a handful of crabs into specimen containers. The team commenced their careful survey, probing the edges of the crab throng. Carter and the behaviorist exchanged a glance before gently ushering the creatures aside, revealing mere glimpses of the sand below. It was a delicate dance of push and coax, respecting the creatures' boundaries while urging them to yield their ground. The crab's defiance had left them puzzled, the mystery deepening with each breath of ocean air. Charts and laptops adorned the makeshift research station as theories were proposed. Each hypothesis attempted to unravel the crab's behavior, yet none seemed to fit snugly into the puzzle. Carter watched the horizon, where the water blurred with the sky. His thoughts troubled. The site's vulnerability weighed on him. The idea of its desecration by treasure hunters or the curious made his stomach twist. We must protect it, he murmured, almost to himself, envisioning the crabs scattered by intrusive hands, their secret disturbed, their congregation broken. Professor Ludwig stood before the microphones, his voice firm yet calm. We stand before a living enigma. 
he addressed the gathering crowd. I implore you, let us study this phenomenon with the respect it deserves. They were united in purpose, guardians of a deep sea secret. Plans for a swift return took shape, each member aware that the world's eyes were upon them, and more critically, upon the crabs they sought to understand. Security boats now flecked the area, a silent testament to the site's importance. The team, relieved by the enforced perimeter, could work undisturbed. Submerged once more, the divers encircled the site, each movement measured, each breath controlled. The device was activated, its soft hum harmonizing with the ocean's chorus. The crabs, in response, began to shift, a slow and stately dance. The team watched, their hearts in tandem with the rhythm of the crabs' reluctant departure. Under a particularly dense canopy of crabs, the team glimpsed something extraordinary. It was not the seabed that held the crabs' attention, but an object, its form obscured by time and tide. Despite their mounting excitement, the team's actions remained deliberate, their methods unhurried. The artifact, whatever its story, was a fragile link to another time, deserving of their utmost care. The team encircled the artifact in silent communion, aware that they were witnesses to a fragment of history. Laid out in the makeshift lab, the artifact spoke a silent history, predating the galleons and caravels that sailed the open seas. Initial carbon dating prompted widened eyes and hushed tones. The relic was a touchstone to a time long before maps charted these waters, a sentinel of the deep past. The analysis deepened, electromagnetic signatures charted and cataloged. As the data mounted, so too did understanding. The crabs, with their innate compasses, were drawn to the artifact's magnetic song, a siren call beneath the waves. As the excitement settled, a new chapter began. The site, now under protection, became a beacon for ongoing research. Plans were laid to safeguard its integrity, allowing for the careful study of the crabs and their magnetic attraction to the relic.